This is the second set of notes on plants. This is about different groups of plants and reproduction of plants. So all plants undergo a various kind of life cycle, and we've discussed alternation of generations before with some of the other groups we've talked about. And so there's some terms that you need to know to begin with when we talk about the life cycle of plants. The sporophyte is the spore plant. This is the plant that produces the spores, which are haploid cells, which can grow into multicellular organisms, like multicellular individuals. And the gametophyte is the gamete plant. It's the one that produces the gametes that can combine to make an embryo that is diploid and can grow into the um, <coughs> multicellular individual. And they, the plants go through the alternation of generations from a sporophyte to a gametophyte. In non-vascular plants, the gametophyte is the dominant phase of the life cycle. And in the uh, vascular plants, the sporophyte dominates. And we'll talk a little bit more about what that means in a minute. So in the phyla of living plants, there are several different phyla we'll talk about. But we're going to divide them into vascular, non-vascular, and so forth. So the non-vascular plants are plants that do not have vascular tissue. They don't have xylem or phloem. They move water through the plant by means of diffusion. Because they depend entirely upon diffusion to move the plant, the water from cell to cell, they have, are of necessity very small plants. The ones that we're going to focus on are mosses. Mosses you probably have seen in cool, damp places in parks and in, even in your yard sometimes. They're very usually very bright green, like these that show over here, are very, very uh, small, about maybe a quarter to half an inch tall. Um, this, this is a very much enlarged picture of some, uh, some um, mosses, and we will look at some mosses uh, in lab in a couple of days. The green part is the gametophyte part of the plant. This brown stalk with the pod on the top of it is the sporophyte, and this is where the spores are produced in the capsule here. And we'll talk a little bit more about their life cycles when we do a lab uh, looking at the different kinds of plants. Vascular plants <coughs> do have xylem and phloem. Now remember the term vascular means having tubes. The xylem is, are the tubes that move the water up the plant, and the phloem are the tubes that move the food from the leaves down to the rest of the plant. So this, there are several different groups of vascular plants. First of all, the seedless vascular plants include the ferns. Okay, these are, they do have vascular tissue, xylem and phloem, but they reproduce with spores rather than seeds. And there are lots of different kinds of ferns. We'll look at some ferns in lab two, and hopefully we'll have a chance to look at some spur, spores they produce the, they, they, the leaves open up like this in this little curved thing called a fiddlehead. It kind of looks like the scroll on a violin or bass or, or cello. They open up that way rather than just unfolding open like um, other plants do. When they are mature and produce spores, the spores are found in these groups of uh, sporangia called sori that are usually found on the backs of the leaves, or the backs of the fronds. The main uh, part of the, of the plant is called the frond, and it's composed of all these little leaflets on there. So we'll, again, we'll look at ferns in lab two and talk a little bit more about their life cycle. Now, well, we have to differentiate here between seeds and spores, and I want you to know these definitions, so be sure to write these down. A spore is a haploid cell that can grow into a multicellular individual without having to fuse with another cell. And spores are used for production in the non-vascular plants and in the seedless vascular plants. Seeds are plant embryos diploid with a food supply contained within a protective covering. And these are produced by the, by the um, vascular plants that do produce seeds. And there are two main groups of those that we'll discuss in just a few seconds. The two groups of seed plants are gymnosperms and angiosperms. The term gymnosperm means naked seed. These are, that means that the seed is found on the cones. They're not found in the protective ovary like they are in the angiosperms. Gymnosperms generally have needle-like leaves. Many of them are evergreens. And this includes things like pine trees and fir trees and several other groups of plants. Uh, some of you may have sago palms in your yard. These are a group of plant called a um, cycad, and they produce cones also. Uh, and they're in this gymnosperm group because of that. Um, many of them are green all the time, and um, um, they take different forms. Some of them are smaller, some of them are very large, lots of different kinds there within the gymnosperms. And then the angiosperms are the flowering plants. In angiosperms, the flowers produce a fruit from the ovary 
that covers the seed, so the seeds are protected inside the roots. And this, in, this includes most of the plants that you think about other than pine trees, okay? So things like grasses, things like squash and tomatoes, things like oak trees even, are angiosperms. Even the Spanish moss that you sometimes see growing in the oak trees is a type of angiosperm or flowering plant. The gymnosperms are mostly evergreen. They have needle-shaped leaves and they have cones. And so the, lots of this shows several different kinds of, um, here's a, a, like a fir or a, a juniper kind of tree. Here's some pine trees. And even the big sequoias and redwoods are in that gymnosperm group. So from very small plants to very, very large ones like those. And then we have the angiosperms that have flowers, fruits, and seeds. Now here's a flower diagram. We will label this in class. So um, I'll make sure that you have a copy of the flower that we can label. And we're going to do a, a lab where we're going to actually look at uh, flower structures. So we will talk about that later. In flowers, there are several different structures here. Notice these are all in black. I might expect you to know all these, but I like to be able to refer to them. So the pedicel is the stem of the flower. The enlarged end of it at the bottom of the flower is called a receptacle. And the flower parts are generally arranged in concentric circles around this receptacle. The calyx is the circle of the sepals. The sepals are generally green, and they're the, the leaf parts that, that protect the bud as it opens. In some flowers, the sepals are actually not green. There are sometimes other colors, and like we're going to look at one in lab, where the sepals actually look like petals of the flower. The circle of petals is called the corolla. And then inside the flower, there's different structures. There are stamens, which are the pollen-producing anthers on the filament, and the pistil, which is the female part of the flower, and sometimes also called the carpal. Um, and it consists of the ovary, which produces the ovules, the stigma, and the style. The ovules will become, once they're fertilized, will become the seeds of the plant. Um, this just shows you a generalized picture of the life cycle of a flower, of, of an angiosperm, which is a flowering plant. Here you see the flower, and we're going to look at this area right here. Here we have the carpal or the pistil containing the ovary and the ovule. This is the style and the stigma. These are the anthers and the filament. The anthers are the pollen producing areas. The pollen is the male gametophyte part of the plant, and the ovule is the female part. The pollen lands on the stigma, grows a tube down through the style into the ovary, and fertilizes the, um, the ovule, which then develops into an embryo that's enclosed in protective coverings with a food supply. And this is the seed. The seed is found inside the fruit. Okay? And then the seed can germinate and grow into a new sporophyte, I mean a new gamete, uh, sporophyte plant. The sporophyte in the angiosperm is the major part of the life cycle. That's the main part of the plant that you see. And the gametophyte in the angiosperm is reduced to the pollen and the ovules, very, very small in size. Um, flowers can be perfect, imperfect, or complete, depending on what parts they have. Not all flowers have every part. Perfect flowers have both male and female parts. They have both stamens and pistils. Imperfect flowers have either male or female parts. A complete flower has all of the parts, sepals, petals, stamens, and pistils. An incomplete was missing one or more of those things. So a perfect flower, um, a complete flower will always be perfect, but a perfect flower does not have to be complete. And that sounds confusing, but it's not really that important for us to know. The fruit develops from the ovary. A lot of things that you don't think of as fruits are really fruits, things like tomatoes and avocados, because they are the ripened ovary containing the seeds. When we talk in terms of botany, we study the study of plants. A fruit has a different connotation than it does when you're talking about food. So dis dismiss from your mind the notion that fruits have to be sweet and edible, because they're not necessarily. And we'll look at some different kinds of uh, fruits and seeds as we talk through this unit. And the seeds are from the fertilized ovule. So in, in reproduction, pollination in flowering plants, is, well, and even in gymnosperms, is how, is how reproduction occurs. The pollen is transferred in the flowering plant from the anther to the stigma. And flowers can be self-pollinated, that means that within the same flower, or cross-pollinated, that means that they have to be pollinated from a different flower. The pollen grain germinates and grows a pollen tube down the style to carry two sperm nuclei. 
and most angiosperms undergo something called double fertilization. The pollen grain produces two sperm nuclei, one of which unites with the egg or the ovule to produce the zygote, which will grow into the plant embryo, and the other one unites with two polar bodies uh, to form the endosperm, which is a triploid structure, which produces some of the food for the growing and we'll talk a little bit more about what the endosperm is when we talk about germination. This, this is the end of the notes on uh, the groups of, of groups of plants and reproduction. And the next set of notes will be about germination and about tropisms or responses.